Hello, my name is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at working graphically with derivatives and antiderivatives using the TI Inspire. And as a really nice illustration of this, we're going to use the exam question number three on the free response portions of the AB and BC AP Calculus exams from 2019. Let's get started. Now, the actual exam question appeared on the non-calculated part of the exam, and the function f was presented graphically. In order to work with it on the, the TI Inspire, uh, we'll want to enter that graph as an analytic expression. Now, it was a piecewise graph. It consisted of two linear pieces and one part of a circle. And there was actually another part of the function that was unknown and was never really given to us. So the first piece that was given to us was a line segment that had a slope of negative 1, and it ran from negative 2 to 0 along the x-axis. The next line segment had a slope of 2, ran from 0 to 2, and the quarter circle, which we did have to do a little bit of work to figure out the formula for based on the graphical information, was along the interval from 2 to 5. Okay, now that we have an expression for our function, let's go ahead and graph it. So I'm going to a graphing window, pulling up f1 of x, and we'll make it equal to this function we just defined, f of x. And there we go. And this is the graph uh, that students were presented with on question number 3 on the A, B, and B, C exams in 2019. Now in this question, we are told that there was a certain point on this graph that appeared on the uh, circular part. So let's check that out. Okay, so I'm going to go to the geometry menu, pull up points and lines, and actually choose to specify a point by its coordinates. Now the point that we're given in the stem of the problem is that 3, 3 minus the square root of 5 is on the graph. So let's see if our graph matches up to that. So I'm entering those coordinates, and boom, there we go. So that looks good, and that should be reassuring to us that we have a, a good graph here. All right, now what we'll be doing with this graph is actually looking at its derivative and one of its antiderivatives graphically. To get started on that, let's go to f2 of x and enter a derivative. I'm going to pull up a template. Let's see if we can find a derivative template here. There we go. And so we'll enter that, and let's see, we'll be taking the derivative with respect to x of our function f of x that we just defined. So I'm entering that, and that, now we'll graph that as our f2 of x. Let's take a look. Now this is interesting. It's actually taking some time for the calculator to, to process this, and I think that's because it's in these uh, multiple pieces. All right, so there's a graph of our derivative. And let's just check this out. Okay, over here where our graph, our original graph, had a slope of negative 1, our derivative has a constant value of negative 1. Here our graph, f1, has a slope of positive 2. Its derivative has a constant value of positive 2. And on this piece of the circle, it starts out a very large magnitude negative slope. And the slope stays negative, but gets closer and closer to zero. And the same can be said about the values on the derivatives graph. They start out as large magnitude negatives, and then get closer to zero. Now here's a couple of kind of distinguished points on the graph of f1, our original function. There's a sharp corner at zero, and another sharp change in direction at two. Let's turn on the trace, and right now I'm tracing our original function, which was f1, and I can trace along that graph. Notice it tells me I have a maximum at that sharp corner, and as I'm moving along the graph, I'm seeing the function values for my original f of x. Now let me switch over to the derivative, and now we're tracing along the derivatives graph. And so its function values are the slope values on the blue graph. 
I'm really interested in what will the trace read out at x equals 0 and x equal 2 where we have these sharp changes of direction in our original function graph. All right, well let's go ahead. I, I want to get precisely over to 0. So what I'm going to do is just type in 0 while the trace is on. And then when I hit enter, it will jump to that point. Here we go. Aha, it does say indeed that our first derivative is undefined. Now, that dotted line doesn't mean there's an asymptote. This is just the Inspire's way of telling us that there is no function value there. When I switch back over to the original function f, it is defined there. In fact, that's its y-intercept is at that sharp corner. Now, let's go back to the derivative and now jump over to 2. I enter that, and there again, it was undefined. So, we've got a graph of the function as derivative. Let's look at one of the antiderivatives. So I'm going to go to a new page and get a math box and define an integral function using the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is one that was actually specified in problem three on the 2019 free response questions. So the function that we're given is g of x is going to be a definite integral. I pull up a template and we're given that the lower limit of this integral function should be negative 2. The upper limit will actually be our variable x. And then we'll be integrating the function we were given graphically. And for us that's our f of x. Now we're going to integrate with respect to t because we're already using x as our variable in the upper limit. Alright, we finished defining g of x. I'll go back to the graphs and now I'm going to uh, pull up a new function, f3 of x, and enter our g of x that we just defined. Now this should be the graph of an antiderivative of our original f of x. Our labels are kind of on top of each other. Let me kind of move those out of the way so we can see all three of them. So that black graph is the graph of g of x. And we can see it's nice and smooth. That makes sense because its derivative is a continuous function. And since the graph of f is the derivative of g, the derivative of f is the second derivative of g, which is our red graph here. So where the red graph is negative, g is concave down. Where the red graph is positive, the graph of g is concave up. And where the graph of the red graph again becomes negative, that's where the graph of g again is concave down. Notice that where those two sharp changes of direction in the graph of f are exactly the locations of the inflection points on the graph of g. Okay, one of the questions asked was that what's the absolute maximum value of g on this interval from minus 2 to 5? We can see on the graph here that's occurring at that rightmost endpoint. So I'm going to turn the trace back on. And now we're going to switch the trace over to g. And then let's jump to x equal 5. And there we can see a readout that y value is the maximum value of g on that entire interval. Well, that winds up this video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.